Orale, you already know who it is. It's your boy Gordo tapping in from Phoenix, Arizona. And like I said, I was going to bring you guys some more AZ history. And not only is this Arizona history, it's the United States history. It affected the whole United States. So let's go ahead and get into this. On June 13, 1966, the U.S. Supreme Court hands down its decision in Miranda versus Arizona establishing the principle that all criminal suspects must be advised of their rights before interrogation. Now considered standard police procedure, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. If you have the right to an attorney, you have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you has been heard so many times in television and in film dramas that it has become almost cliche. Very true. The roots of the Miranda decisions go back to March 2nd, 1963, when an 18-year-old Phoenix woman told police that she had been abducted, driven to the desert, and raped. Detective questioned her story gave her a polygraph test, but the results were inconclusive. However, tracking the license plate number of a car that resembled that of her attackers brought police to Ernesto Miranda, who had prior record as a peeping Tom. Although the victim did not identify Miranda in a lineup, he was brought into police custody and interrogated. What happened next is disputed, but officers left the interrogation with a confession that Miranda later recanted, unaware that he didn't have to say anything. The confession was extremely brief and deferred in certain respects from the victim's account of her, the crime. However, Miranda's appointment, appointed defense attorney who was paid $100, and remember people, this was in 1966, so $100, didn't call any witnesses at the ensuing trial, and Miranda was convicted. While Miranda was in the Arizona State Prison, the American Civil Liberties Union took up his appeal, claiming that the confession was false and coerced. The Supreme Court overturned his conviction, but Miranda was retired and convicted in October of 1966, remaining in prison until 1972. Ernesto Miranda was later stabbed to death in the men's room of a bar after a poker game in January 76, which means he only lived four years after his release. As a result of the case against Miranda, each and every person must now be informed of his and her rights when in custody and about to be interrogated. However, on June 23, 2022, the Supreme Court ruled that the law enforcement officers may not be sued for damages under federal civil rights law for failing to issue the Miranda warning to suspects. Man, so... I just thought that you guys would love to hear some history on Arizona and how it also spread it to the whole United States of America and how it all came about for us and everything. So with that being said, do me a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and make sure when you hit that subscribe button, you hit that bell, hit all, so you get notified every single time I drop some content. Again, this is your boy Gordo. Nothing but love and respect, and I'm out.